Hello once again and welcome back to Hearthstone. Today we're going to turn images on this game and try and get a bit further. Uh, try and get a bit better and try and progress in general. Uh, I'm doing another kind of, just another game here. Just let's have the one game this episode. Uh, in the last game and the game before that we had two games. Or more, well at least more than one game, but this time we're going to stick with one and see how that goes. Again, I'm doing post commentary. It seems to work in my favour um, in terms of gameplay, so we'll just leave it at post commentary for now. Uh, yeah, it seems to work. But as you can see, I'm against the Shaman, I'm playing as a warrior as per, as per usual, it's the same deck as always, and it, it basically focuses a lot on kind of buffing up the one card. So what it does is, if you get a card such as the uh, Worgen, I think it's like a Worgen warrior who has Whirlwind Sprint as his Battle Rage, if you get him and you taunt him up with Rampage, which means that when he's affected he gets plus three kind of attack and plus three health, you can have a strong card. So if you have like even a taunt, they say the bouncer guy who's a goblin, if you taunt him with a rampage card, he'll get plus three plus three, which is really effective. Now he has to be damaged in order for that to happen, but there's another card which means that your cards can't blo go below one health for that round. So if you have the card that means they can't go below one health with the card that makes him plus three plus three afterwards, you can kind of plan ahead and have like an order of certain cards and build up to having the kind of buffed up card that you want that can tear down, depending on your mood, it can tear down a lot of the hero's health or it can tear down a really big kind of enemy that's on the ground, such as the core hound who does 9 damage and has 5 health. If you use that against the core hound you'll just kill him straight away. And even though he only has 5 health, if you buff up a smaller card to kill the core hound it'll be quite effective and if you do it on an iron golem who's 7-7 seven, seven, Again, you can take them down pretty easily. So it works with doing it on the hero and doing it on a kind of bigger card. Another way that I try win, the, like, the, that was my go-to method. Another go-to method would be a Hero's Call in hand with the Flaming Axe. So a Hero's Call gives you plus four a hero damage, but then because you have a weapon, it turns into seven. And you can use it with the uh, other axe, which is actually in my deck right now. The I don't know what's called the Reaper or the Reaper. But if you use that with Hero's Call, that's more effective, but it's much more kind of mana draining. And I tend to use the Hero's Call because with the Flaming Axe, because that's that does the job basically. You could use that 5 mana crystal card, but it would be as expensive as hell, maybe a late game type kind of thing. If you had two Hero's Calls, like me, you could chance it, but again, there's no guarantee you can get one Hero's Call, never mind two. But here we are, we're just taking down his deck. He's 30, I'm 26. Again, I always lose health at the start because my deck's mainly middle to end, I think, is what it's focused too much on. I mean, it works out in my favourite a lot, but again, sometimes if you don't have right cards, you can die. But I'll kind of, a lot of the game is based on luck. I think that's just how it is. It's part luck, part skill, part planning. Three parts. And if you don't get a good start in hand, then you're fucked. But we're right now. Uh, he has that little tiger there, but we can't attack him because he has that weird sneak thing. We've got the kind of... The, we've got the upper hand in terms of like the amount of cards. We've got three, he's got two. But his does six damage. And as you can see there, it's took down my shield and it's took a bit of my health away. And you can do it again because he has Will and Sprint. So it's a pretty deadly card right there. Alright, my turn now. I suppose you could use the... Uh, plus three plus three on a snap draw if you wanted to but I don't think that would be as effective so I tend to just use it with either that bouncer taunt or the wargan I don't have the wargan or the buff so it doesn't make much of a difference here attack him sweet execute is a pretty good uh, card but you need to use it like sparingly like execute on a buffed up kind of high card will really get like save your life basically but people tend to use it too early. They think like because it's a one mana crystal card, you need to use it really early, but that's not really the case. You should leave it for later game, if you can. I mean, obviously, if he has a card that's really buffed up medium game, then of course use it. If you have two, again, you can use you can use two of them. Use one of the two. But you tend to leave the execute till the end, because it does seem like a kind of last resort type thing. So, right, so I put him out because he was kind of buffed up in the health department. Seven health. So what I did is I used the taunt on that guy, probably 
shouldn't have done that, but I need to get rid of him. I always, I always fall in the kind of illusion that you have to attack with the things that you have on the deck, or the things you have on the board. I think that you need to attack every time. I know you don't, I know you can just end the turn, but I just feel like you have to attack, I don't know why. Just mess around with the board. It's the most weirdest gimmick in the world, but it keeps you on the chain if you're waiting for them. So we've got 16 health, he's got 24. He's got the upper hand in terms of health right now, and he's also got totems. The one thing that shamans tend to do is just like mass totem, in my experience. And totems can really fuck you over if you let them get too many of the totems. Like there's totems that give them more health, there's totems that give them spell damage. If they get a lot of them then they'll just be buffed up, like look there, another totem. What does that one do? Taunt. See? So you have to attack the taunt here. Throw it a taunt with the snap jaw. I lost a bit of his health, but I mean, three healths, all right. So he can be a diversion of anything. Now he, that injured whatever he is. Can't really see the writing from here, but he's good for the card that um, does three three because you need to be damaged in order to use that. So if I use the three three card with the injured guy, it makes more sense. Like what he does, what his battle cry is to damage himself by four health. And you might think, oh, that's a stupid ability that's going to kill you. But if you use the the ability, the kind of buffs that mean you have to be hurt, it is good because you can just use the buff straight away because he's already hurt himself, you know. So using my method, using my kind of playstyle, it does kind of come into play, and it is quite effective. Otherwise, you would have to wait for them to attack you to use quite a lot of the buffs that I have in my deck. So it is quite good in that regard, but it's really situational. Because put, he puts himself down to 4 health, even though he starts at 7, so like, they could kill him pretty easily. What's he going to do? I think he has a buff there, because he's... Whenever someone gets a buff, they always think about it a lot. Is it a buff? Not really, but it's the same kind of thing. Like The Crazed Alchemist can be good for you as well. Like, with uh, Core Hound, you could change his health to 9 and his attack to 5. So it could be a tank kind of thing. Which, is that, which would be really effective actually. I don't have a core hound in my deck. Probably should get one. I mean I can get I can get one. I had one in my old deck, but he seemed to like die a lot. Like, even though was, because his attack was so high he became like a high target for them. So they went straight for him. So there's the guy who damages himself, and then Rampage, see how he damaged himself? We can now use Rampage on him, because he's damaged. So that makes more sense. So the 3-3 um, the three, three card's called Rampage. I always forget the name, but Rampage is the name, and that's probably one of my favourite cards. So put the charge guy down, because we have enough mana crystals. I probably should have put her down first, but no one else was asleep, so it was pretty pointless, it doesn't really matter. And um, because he was damaged, because he damaged himself, we could put that 3-3 buff on. He has 7 damage, attack the hero, and now he's on 7 health because we attacked with our weapon as well. If we had Hero's Call with our weapon, we would have killed him, but Hero's Call wasn't in the deck right now. I only have one Hero's Call, I could get 3, and I probably should invest in 3, because even though there's a chance you have three heroes call in the same deck, you could also have a better chance of just getting one, you know? And the more chance you have of getting heroes call, the better in my opinion. Especially with this playstyle. Now he's going to take out that card. Obviously because it does the most attack, it's only logical they'll take out the highest attack card. But he's done his job, so it doesn't really matter. I mean he only does one damage. So I mean that doesn't matter either. He should have kept his crazed alchemist and used it on the injured guy. But of course he didn't see he didn't know I was gonna do that, he didn't see that coming, so unknown. So what he's done is he's just he's just one furied one furied or wind furied himself, so he does two attacks instead of one. But it's pretty pointless because if he attacks again he'll die. So he's just taking out a card basically if he attacks again. See? It's gone. And he didn't even kill my card. And now all his cards are asleep, so it's just... Do you know what I mean? He didn't, it was pointless. He could have just stayed there and been a distraction, but no. 
He tried to kill it, didn't kill it, and now I can attack his hero again and kill him. Right, so what I did here is I froze her because she did a lot of damage. But then because the other person did two damage, it was pretty even, like taking them out. And then I attacked him. He's gone. Gone to the abyss. So we actually won this game surprisingly enough. I, th I think we get there. We did win a game in the last one, but I don't know if that was a flick or not. But hit that. The last one was a half a game. This one's a full game. There you go. So pretty successful.